praise you. Thank you for everyone that's here this morning. circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. But faith which worketh by love. You can be seated this morning. The song that was just sung actually goes pretty good with my message this morning. Many Christians have left their first love. They love Jesus, but they are no longer in love with Jesus. And you can't be in faith without being in love with Jesus. This morning I can sit here and I can tell you with all honesty that I want to make a believer out of you. That I want to make sure that you are faith-filled and, and faithful. I want to make sure that you're, you, you, you keep in the faith by keeping yourself in love of God by keeping in love with Jesus. Yes. Yeah. But I know and you know that I can't do anything other than encourage you to do that, but it's your choice you've got to make. Some may be saying, well, all this, you know, what's love really got to do with it? Well, I just read to you in Galatians chapter 5 that faith worketh through what? Love. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, yes. except he be reprobates. I'm going to say this, and you'll hear me say this a few times during this message, but you can't be in faith if you are not in love with Jesus. Yes. You have to keep yourself in the love of God. How? By keeping yourself in love with Jesus. Yes, I want to title this this morning a question. Have I fallen out of love with Jesus? Have I fallen out of love with Jesus? 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about though I speak with tongues of men and angels that have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Even though I may have the gift of prophecy and understand all the knowledge and the mysteries, and though I have all the faith that I can remove mountains, but if I have not love, I am nothing. And though I may bestow all the goods to feed the poor and give my body to be burned, but if I have not love, it profits me nothing. It goes on to say that love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not uh, boast itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It's not provoked. Love does not think evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Love bears all things, believeth all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and it finishes by saying love never fails. Verse 13 then goes on to say that if you abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. We have to make sure 
that we do not fall out of love with Jesus. Because you can't be in faith if you're not in love with Jesus. Because the Bible told us already that faith works through love. We have to keep ourselves in the love of God by keeping ourselves in love with Jesus. Because believe it or not, you can fall out of love with Jesus. Revelations chapter 2, starting with verse 1, it says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. We like these next couple verses. I know thy works. I know thy labor. I know thy patience. And I know how you can you can't not bear them which are evil, and you tried them which say they are apostles, and, and and they are not, and you found them to be liars, and has borne and has patience for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. But that's where we want to stop at. Yeah. We want to stop right there. We don't read. We don't. We don't want to read the next two verses because verse four says, nevertheless. Have I somewhat against thee? Because thou hast left thy first love. And then verse 5 says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. When he says remove the candlestick, He's talking about, I'm going, to remove the, I'm going to remove the church. I'm going to remove the impact that the church has. I will unchurch them. I will take away the gospel. I will take away the ministers and even the ordinance from them. Yeah. You see, in Revelation chapter 2, Jesus said that I see your works, that I see your labor, that I see your patience, but, it, but he never said, I see your faith. He never says, I see your faith, because they fell out of faith when they fell out of love with him. In verse 5 says, the, the text says, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. Can I be real with you this morning? Can I be honest with you this morning? And maybe can I offend some of you this morning? But some of us have fallen out of love with Jesus. I didn't say you didn't love Jesus. I said you have fallen out of love with Jesus. That you are no longer in love with Jesus. The zeal is gone. The thrill is gone. You find yourself enduring this Christian life, but you're not enjoying it. You find yourself just going through the motions of doing church work, but your heart is no longer in it. You find yourself going to church, but you're never expecting God to meet you there. Yeah. You've left your first love. Oh, and if you don't keep yourself in the love of God, by keeping yourself in love with Jesus, you can fall out of love with Him. Oh, yeah. How can you say that, Brother Stewart? How can you say that I've fallen out of love with Jesus? Well, I've already said, well, the zeal is gone. Go back to whenever you first came to God. Go back to whenever the preacher first preached the word of God to you. And you found yourself at an old-fashioned altar. You found yourself repenting. You found yourself asking God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And he did. And you were baptized in his name. It wasn't long after that. You tried to be the very first one at church. It was right after that. That when you got to church. You were laser focused in on worship. You were laser focused in on praising God. You were laser focused in on listening to what the preacher said from behind the pulpit. You hinged on every single word. But now we come to church and we worry about whose toenails are getting clipped. We worry about who's pulling out the checkbook or who's pulling out their wallet or, or who's leaning over and talking to this one or who's talking to that one. We're no longer laser focused in on what we used to be. The zeal is gone. And I can say it today without a doubt that there are some that are no longer focused. 
focus uh, because they have fallen out of love with Jesus. You come to church now and you look out, and I can look out. I know Brother Netterville sees it too, and maybe Sister Jennifer knows. You got heads down. You're not praying. You know what you're doing? You got this out. You got this up. And I ain't look. Everybody knows I love a phone just about as much or more than anybody else. But you look out there and you're looking down. You're not preaching. Because if you're wearing glasses, a light off the phone wears off the glasses just to let you know. But you're not where you used to be with God because you're not focused anymore. You've got this little thing in your hand. You're looking down. Maybe you're looking at Facebook. Maybe you're looking at Twitter. Or maybe you're looking at Instagram. Or maybe you're looking at the football scores. Or the games are starting to go on. You're not focused in. You're not in love with Jesus. Because if you was in love with Jesus, this would stay in your pocket. And you would be focused in, not on the man standing here, but on the word of God that's coming through, on the worship that's coming forth. You'll be the one lifting your hands. You'll be the one standing on your feet. You'll be the one walking the aisle. You'll be the one saying, I don't care what anybody else is doing, but I've come to worship God, and I've come to fall in love over and over and over and over again. why we can't have revival? Because we've fallen out of love with Jesus. You know why we can't have revival? Because we want to come to church and look at our clock or our watch. And can't wait to get home and catch a kickoff. Or can't wait to get home to meet with this one or meet with that one. Church, we got to get back to the old landmarks. That when we walk in this car, we lose all sense of time. We lose all sense of distraction. And we're Let's fall in love with Jesus. You've got to be in love with him. It's more to say, I love you, Jesus. But Jesus, I'm in love with you. I know your patience. 
I know this and I know that. But you left your first love. All of those things, as pastors already mentioned, are going to do you no good if you're not referencing the Word of God. If you're not referencing when you walk in this church and give God everything you've got. Oh, no. Jude 21 says, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Love is not by chance. Love is by choice. You have to keep yourself in the love of God. You have to keep yourself in love with God. Yes. It's called, if you would, excuse the language, but it's called the thrill of the hunt. You maintain the zeal and you maintain the thrill, if you would, uh, going after God. You're looking for Jesus and following Jesus. But if you don't keep yourself in the love of God, by keeping yourself in love with God, you will fall out of love. Jesus keeps himself in love with you. Lamentations 23 and 21, 23 reminds us that he keeps himself, Brother Bruce, in love with us. Because the word says his compassions fail not. And each and every day his mercies are renewed upon us. Yes. He stays in love with us. He keeps himself in love with you. But it takes two for a relationship to work out. It takes two. For that relationship to work out. You have to keep yourself in love with God. Just like you have to keep yourself in love with your spouse. Some of you have lost your first love. Because there's, there's, there's no hunt for the will of God. There's no hunt for the way of God. There's no hunt in worshiping Jesus. We're complacent. We're satisfied. We're satisfied with the Monday and say, yeah, I went to church this morning. Our eyes light up with somebody. What did you do Sunday morning? Oh, I went to church. That's our mindset now. But Jesus said he sees all that. Yeah. But yet you've fallen out of love with me. You've lost your first love. Yes, yes. Have I fallen out of love with Jesus? Church, we get so distracted at the littlest of things. Yes. And you've heard me say this time and time again. Sometimes we create our own distractions. I'm going to get away from that. Well, he's preaching good now. What else I had to do today? Have you go to look and try to figure out something else? Or you want to grab a kid that don't even belong to you? Or like right now, we know Sister Bonnie's going to leave, but every head turns to the back. Yeah. We're so easily distracted. We're not laser focused. Right. And some of us will go home today, God, why this? God, why that? God, why this? Because you've fallen out of love with him. You didn't give that two hours. You was in church this morning. You weren't focused. You thought about everything else you had to do today. Yeah. Have I fallen oh, God. out of love with Jesus? It was just like a coffee pot. An electric coffee pot. You can, you know, if you do nothing long enough, 
there's an automatic shut off back on this. And they shut off. And a lot of us, Brother Danny, are in automatic shut off mode. We just go on through the motions, but yeah. just go on through the motions full on, we're just going to shut down. We're going to shut off. So if we're in automatic shut off mode, it's time this morning that we get plugged back in. Amen. You can take you can take the coffee pot and place it next to an electrical outlet. You can put a filter in it. You can put water in it. But it will do nothing until you plug it in. Right. Right. Amen. Sometimes we've got to get plugged in again. Yes. Amen. Even on Wednesday nights. Come on. You know, let me, you know what? Let me say something. This past Wednesday night was the first Wednesday night service since March the 11th. Seven months. Yeah. I know some were sick. I know some were working. What was the rest of them? I would have thought we had this many or more that Wednesday night, but we ain't been in church in so long on Wednesday night. But you know why most of them went in here? They've fallen out of love with Jesus. And you can go tell them I said that. Matter of fact, they can watch it again later if they want to. Sometimes we create an excuse just to have an excuse. Come on, that's right. God sees those too. We get back to the coffee pot, just like a coffee pot. It'll stay hot for a little while once it's unplugged. Once it's shut off. It'll stay hot for a little while. Just like a Christian could look like they have it all going on. Even after they've fallen in love, after they've fallen out of love with the Lord. Yeah. They look like, Sister Lou, they're still percolating. Uh -huh. yeah. They look like they're still working. Yeah. They look like they're still hot for Jesus, but it's not the pot that's hot, it's what's on the inside that's hot. You can still quote scriptures. You can still sing the old songs of Zion. You still know when to say hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. But it won't be long if you don't get plugged in again, again. You'll find yourself falling out of love with Jesus. You've got to get plugged in. And you know, what do I do? Well, in order to get plugged back in, you got to get back to what you used to do. You got to fast and pray. You got to get plugged in. You got to spend time with the Lord, fasting and praying like you used to. You need to start praising and worshiping God like you used to. Come on, some of us remember the day that we walked in. We didn't do care who was here. We didn't care what anybody else was doing. I come to praise the Lord. Amen. But now we let every little thing cause us to fall out of love with Jesus. We need to get plugged back in. We need a revival. Yeah. We need a revival in here. Yeah. But in order to have revival in here, in order to have revival out there, we got to have revival in here. Yeah. If you don't have revival in here, you can knock every door you can on Saturday. It ain't going to do any good until we fall back in love with Jesus. Once you get plugged back in, oh, God. it won't take long to get turned on again for Jesus. It won't take long to get turned. Many of us have lost our first love with Jesus. You have to fight to keep a relationship right. 
You can't just let it go. Before long, it's completely destroyed. And some things are worth fighting for. And I can't think of anything else than my soul that's worth fighting for. But if you want to take your chances of living where you are with God right now, you go right ahead. But I'm going to choose to bow down now. I'm going to choose to worship Him now. I'm going to choose to fall in love with Him now. There's things that are worth fighting for. I'd rather fight than quit. But some of us have a mentality, I'd rather quit than fight. But I'd rather fight than quit. I know the devil sometimes, he has me against the ropes. But I'm going to fight. I'm not going to quit. I know sometimes he gives me a black eye. I know sometimes he bruises me up. And I hurt on the inside. But I'd rather fight than quit. I'd rather fight than quit. I'd rather fall in love with Jesus after every black eye. You gotta want it just as bad yeah. as those men 
that brought the paralyzed man to the house where Jesus was preaching. They could have said, I quit. They said, no, I'm going to fight. They took him to the roof of the house. They tore the roof back. They lowered him in to get him to Jesus. How bad do you want it this morning? Yeah. How bad do you want to fall in love with Jesus again this morning? Yeah. Ask yourself the question. And you know, only you can answer. How about falling out of love? Jesus. If I've ministered to you this today, if the Holy Ghost has ministered, ministered to you this morning about your walk with God, I don't care if you're a leader in this church, I don't care if you're a musician, I don't care if you're a singer, Sunday school teacher, or whatever, whoever you are. That the Holy Ghost dealt with you about your walk with Him this morning. About your love for Him. If there's any question there this morning, would you make your way to this altar? Would you make your way here this morning and make sure that you're right? Make sure that you're falling in love with Jesus. Make sure that you haven't fallen out of love with Jesus. Oh, He sees your works. He sees your patience. He sees all the great things you're doing. But he can't see your faith. Why can't he see your faith? It's because you've fallen out of love with him. You left your first love. Come on, is there anyone else this morning that wants to fall in love all over again with Jesus? I want to fall in love with you again, Jesus. I want to get that zeal back. I want to get that thrill back. I want to get that laser focus mentality back. Is there anyone else? Think about it. I see in your good works you've done. I see that you cast out devils in my name. But the part for me, I never knew you. When you come this morning with the rest of them and fall in love with Jesus all over again. Fall in love with Jesus all over again. Don't let a relationship take you away from God. Don't let a job take you away from God. Don't let people take you away from God. He's your first love. He's your first love. Come this morning and fall in love with Jesus over again.
Thank you.